Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is money. M-O-N-E-Y. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Don't be afraid, he's harmless. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you, thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at us? We invited some railroad conductors and some longshoremen to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected conductor Carl Putt and longshoreman Clarence Blake. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, to You Bet Your Life. And if either of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A conductor and a longshoreman, eh? Uh... Conductor, where are you from? Uh, originally from Des Moines, Iowa. Tell me, who do you conduct for, the Los Angeles Philharmonic? <laughs> I'm a conductor for the Union Pacific Railroad. What train do you work on? Uh, city of Los Angeles. Uh, where do you go on your train? I handle a run from uh, Los Angeles to Las Vegas, Nevada. The city of Los Angeles goes to Las Vegas? <laughs> the city of Los Angeles goes all the way to Chicago. <laughs> Must leave an awful big hole between Glendale and Long Beach. <laughs> well, that's where the city was yesterday. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Longshoreman uh, Blake is your name? Uh, where, where are you from? Uh, uh, originally from Rome, New York. How, how long a uh, showman are you, Mr. Blake? <laughs> I don't think I know what you mean. Well, frankly, I don't know what I mean either. <laughs> Let's have another go at it, huh? <laughs> How long do you have to be to be a longshoreman? Huh? Oh, not very, very much. You mean size has nothing to do with it, huh? <laughs> then you could be a short longshoreman, huh? Of course, so. Longshoreman, where, where do you work? Uh, down in San Pedro. And, uh, where in San Pedro do you work? On the docks. <laughs> I thought the docks worked on each other. <laughs> what made you decide to become a longshoreman? Was it an urge to do a uplifting work? Or... No, uh, I believe I love I love the water. Mm -hmm. Get that in the bathtub. <laughs> you like the ocean, huh? Yes, like, I do. Uh, you like the sea? Why aren't you a sailor instead of a landlubber? Huh? Well, that's not a very good way to raise a family. That's not necessarily true. Fish manage pretty well. Huh? <laughs> How far out to sea do you, do you get as a longshoreman, huh? Oh, about 25 feet. <laughs> Clarence, your anchor is dragging, huh? <laughs> Now tell me, whistle stop. <laughs> what are your duties as a, as a conductor? Well, to uh, collect the tickets, see that the space is properly assigned, and to maintain the schedule. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought the engineer maintained the schedule. No, uh, I'm the head of the train. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> You're the cow catcher, in other words. Yeah? <laughs> well, let's take an average day. What's the first thing you do when you report for work in the morning? Uh, compare your watch with a standard clock, and uh, you check against inferior and superior trains. Well, how do you tell an inferior train? Is it uh, <laughs> come from the wrong side of the tracks? <laughs> What time does your train stop at San Badu? Uh, uh, in which direction? <laughs> Going along the track. Uh, isn't that the customary direction? Well, I mean, uh, going east or west. It doesn't make any difference. East is east and west is west. <laughs> and never the train shall meet. <laughs> Well, tell me, Conductor, what was your most unusual experience uh, on your train? Well, uh, perhaps the most unusual was uh, having babies arrive while en route. You had a baby en route? <laughs> well, yes, I've uh, had two or three. 
<laughs> well, was it an upper or a lower bird? <laughs> Well, tell me, uh, did you throw the kid off because he didn't have a ticket? Or... <laughs> no, the new arrival and the mother was put off at the first stop for hospitalization. Oh, I see. That was probably the first time your train ever had an arrival ahead of schedule. <laughs> now, incidentally, suppose you're racing along and the stalk decides to make a landing on your caboose and you have to stop the train. How do you instruct the engineer? We have a system of uh, whistle signals. I have a whistle signal, too, but no one stops for it. Huh? Uh, well, one whistle, when running, means uh, look to your orders. Well, what do, you, do you stick your head out the window and whistle? Or? No, we have a system of air whistles within the train. You pull a cord. Okay, well, what's two, what's two whistles? Two whistles when standing means to start. Two whistles when running is stop the train at once. You want to throw the kid off, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and what, what's the next one? Three whistles. Three whistles when standing is back the train. Three whistles when running is stop at the next station. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like you're always on a toot on that train. <laughs> How do you get the train started again? Uh, we give the engineer a highball. <laughs> No wonder you're always on a toot, huh? <laughs> what time does your train stop at San Badu? Uh, yesterday it was uh, 721 westbound and 621 eastbound. I don't know what it is today. Oh. Well, as soon as it stops, will you signal for a highball for me? <laughs> now that I know all about railroads and longshoremen, I mean, you're going to get your chance to win a lot of money. You bet your life. Car owners all over the country are familiar with the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. There are more than 3,000 of these signs from one end of this nation to the other. And each and every one of them is a cordial invitation to you to come in and get acquainted. These dealers are certain that once they have a chance to serve you, you'll come back whenever you need service for your car. The folks at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers will do their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely. That's their creed. It will pay you to give them a chance to show you what good service really means. So, drive in next time you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected farm animals and birds as your category. Is that right? Now, you got $20. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. What kind of a farm animal is an Aberdeen Angus? Cow. A cow is right. <laughs> a great start with $30. You conductor, you've been looking out the window. That's <laughs> All right, now you got $30. What, uh, how much are you going to bet? 20. 20 $20. What kind of a farm animal is a patron? It's a horse. It's a horse, is right. They're climbing, they have $50. You stevedore, you've been loading horses, haven't you? <laughs> All right, now you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you try? 40 40 $40. What kind of a farm animal is a Toggenberg? T-O-G-G-E-N-B-U-R-G. -G -G. I think it's a goat. A goat is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have ninety dollars. So how much of the ninety are you going to try? Fifty. Fifty is right. Fifty dollars. What is a pole in China? Pig. Pig. A pig is right. And they wind up with one hundred and forty dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Don't run away now. You might get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still money. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a housewife and a gardener, and here they are. Mrs. Sarah Pinola and Mr. Arthur Anders meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word while we're talking, wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you use every day. 
A housewife and a gardener, eh? Uh, Mr., uh, what is it, Anders? I presume you're the gentleman who does the gardening. Yes, sir. Are, are you married? Yes. Since you're a gardener, I'll bet I know what pet name you call your wife. Something you grow in your garden, it begins with a P. You know what I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. Petunia? <laughs> no, I was thinking of pumpkin. <laughs> but you know your wife better than I do. By the way, what's your... <laughs> By the way, what's your, what's your wife's place name? Peggy. No, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> what, what's your hometown, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Panola? Racine, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. What sort of work does your husband do? Uh, he works for Los Angeles Transit Line, a bus driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you meet him? I met him in a shooting gallery where I was working. <laughs> was he half shot at the time? <laughs> no, oh. he was very happy when he walked in. Oh. <laughs> how was he when he left? <laughs> what do you mean he was at? What were you doing at the shooting gallery? I was working. Uh, Were you one of the clay pigeons? I was loading up... No. (laughs) I was loading up the guns and taking their money. (laughs) Sarah, you just said money, and that's tonight's secret word, so you just won $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. I bet you think money really grows on trees, huh? (laughs) Now, what were we discussing before you shook that money tree, huh? How I met my husband. Oh, yes. You were loaded in the gallery. (laughs) What was your husband doing there? Uh, He was taking an evening stroll. To a shooting gallery? (laughs) No, he passed the shooting gallery. Uh Uh-huh. So he saw a girl working there, which was me, and he thought, well, he was going to have some fun. He's pretty shrewd, isn't he, huh? (laughs) The minute he saw you, he said, that's a girl, huh? (laughs) You can't fool old man Panola. He knows you. <laughs> so? So, he wanted to fool me, and he says, uh, I bet I can outshoot you. But he didn't know what was coming. I says, okay. I says, see if you can outshoot me. So, we, he shot about... Is this five. verbatim? <laughs> <laughs> he bought about $5 worth of shots. He'd take one round, and i take one round. And I kept beating him. He said, oh, he was mad. He put his hands in his pocket. He walked out. He was real mad. Then the next night he comes, I outshot him again. That went on for about a week. Well, he didn't Well, how much did he spend by that time? No, he, he must have spent about $35 that week. Well, mm-hmm. he was single. He could afford it. <laughs> so, by this time, you were beginning to suspect that... Uh, yeah, so I said, oh, there's, there's more to it than that. Mm-hmm. So he more, had, There's more to it than meets the bullseye, you say. <laughs> taking you out. He says, I'm going to show you. He says, you can outshoot me on live game. He says, I'll marry you. I kind said, of a well, furious I proposal, isn't it? <laughs> we went, and I couldn't shoot at you all. You went where? Where'd you we go? went hunting. Uh, it's in pheasant country up in Wisconsin. Oh. So we went hunting pheasants, and I'm ashamed to say I couldn't shoot a live game. Boy, he was good, though. He could shoot. <laughs> but he says, I won't break your heart, honey. He says, I'll marry you anyway. <laughs> And did you love him by this time? Oh, yeah, I liked him quite a bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> how, how old were you when, when all this happened, when you got married? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's hard to shoot a pheasant when you're fifteen. I guess. <laughs> now, tell me, uh, Mr. Anders, are you, you're still here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thought maybe you'd gone to seed. Uh, As a, as a gardener, uh, whom do you work for, uh, Mr. Anders? Well, I work for myself. You're in business for yourself, huh? You develop your business by running it into the ground, eh? <laughs> now tell us, Chris, uh, that's, that's short for chrysanthemum. Uh... <laughs> do you know how to spell chrysanthemum? Well, it's C-H-R. Well, you don't have to know how to spell them. <laughs> Mr. Anders, I'm aware of that, but uh, <laughs> where's your factory? On Flower Street? Uh, no, I don't have a factory. Fine gardener. Doesn't even have a plant, huh? <laughs> Specifically, what do you do in your job? 
Oh, mow lawns, put in sprinkling system. Why you know fellow named mow lawn, huh? <laughs> Have you planted anything in your garden lately, Sarah? Yeah, um, I saw a cactus by some people we know, and I liked it, so I dug it out of their yard and made a hole in mine and put it in there. <laughs> Where were the people? They were home. <laughs> Well, how did you plan? Did you just dig a hole and I stick it in? I just dug a hole and put it in. I said, either it grows or it dies. I don't know. <laughs> Sarah, that's a pretty cynical attitude. Uh. <laughs> Was she doing it the proper way, uh, Mr. Anders? Well, that's about right. It doesn't take too much knowledge to raise a cactus. <laughs> I guess the big trick is stealing the plant, huh? <laughs> Are any flowers blooming this early in the year, Mr. Anders? Well, there's quite a few early bloomers. On the <laughs> you mean on a windy day, huh? <laughs> you say there are quite a few uh, early bloomers. Do you ever find any ants in those early bloomers? <laughs> This has been all been very educational, Miss Anders, and you too, Sarah. Now, let's see if a gardener and a housewife will get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get the chance. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The conductor and the longshoreman earned $140. You ready? Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs about the weather. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, how much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. Give me the title of this weather song. Play, Jerry. Talk right up now. Let it snow. The lady says let it snow. $20, Groucho. So how much of the 30 will you try? 20. What is the name of this song? Okay, Jerry. April Showers. April Showers. They're $40 now. That's $50. Now you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you bet? 40 $40. Is that all right with you? Here we go. Play it, Jerry. They're having a heat wave. Now they have ninety dollars. All right, you've zoomed up to ninety bucks. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the ninety? Eighty. Eighty dollars. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. No, stormy weather. Stormy weather is right. And they wind up with one hundred and seventy dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know who gets the chance at the $1,500 question. Fenneman, who's ahead? Well, the housewife and the gardener are leading with $170. And the secret word is still money. Just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected Miss Margot Heister, a 10-cent store clerk, and Mr. J.C. Solomon, a diamond merchant. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Solomon, huh? Right. J.C. Solomon, huh? You're the diamond merchant, huh? Right. Where are you from, uh, J.C.? Chicago. Thought maybe you'd be a stone's throw from Los Angeles, huh? since you're in the diamond business, huh? That's right. <laughs> you're from the Miss Heister? You're from the Ten Cent store? Yes, I am. Which one? Huh? Crest on Hollywood Boulevard. Pretty fair looking dish to be in Ten Cent store. <laughs> well, uh, what's your hometown, uh, Margot? Sun Valley. Sun Valley, Idaho? Are you a good skier? No. You never did any skiing? No. Then? That's the way it goes. Huh? <laughs> People in Brazil never drink coffee. Huh? <laughs> People here can't afford it. Huh? <laughs> uh, are you married, Margot? Yes, I am. Well, let's talk about diamonds, huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, J.C., do you ever hand out samples? <laughs> I never hand out samples. You don't give any diamonds don't away, don't give huh? diamonds away. Haven't you ever given just a tiny little diamond to a beautiful girl? Yes, I did once. <laughs> you slippery old dog, you. <laughs> did you ever see that girl again? Yes, I do. I married her. <laughs> Was that to get the diamond back? <laughs> 
Do you handle anything besides diamonds, uh, Mr. Solomon? Yes, I do. Rubies, sapphires, emeralds. Precious stone once cost me 500 bucks. Did I get uh, gypped? Well, what kind of a stone did you buy? I didn't buy any. The doctor didn't say. He charged me $500 for removing it. <laughs> what, what are the semi-precious stones? Well, they are opals, tourmalines, aquamarines. I thought that's something you found under your house. Aquamarines. <laughs> what color are opals? Opals are a variety of colors. Every color under the sun is an opal. That isn't true. Opals are only pink. I watched her hanging them on the line only this morning. You know? <laughs> Which is the most valuable of all the stones, Mr. Solomon? I should judge a diamond is about the most valuable stone. Why, is, why are they so expensive? Is such because a big they demand? are in demand. They are in demand. Oh, certainly is at my house, I know. <laughs> we don't have any diamonds at my house, but there's certainly a big demand for them. <laughs> How much do you charge for the average diamond? Well, they run anywhere from $50 to $3,500 per carat. It's a lot of money for a carat. <laughs> I don't see how those rabbits can afford them. <laughs> I think I'd better get back to figures I'm more accustomed to. Uh, hello, uh, Margot. How are you? Huh? <laughs> what kind of rings are in greatest demand at your store? Well, I think I'd say engagement and wedding rings. I know a certain gardener who bought one of your rings. Maybe that's why he's got a green thumb now. <laughs> you sell diamonds and emeralds and rubies in your dime store? Yes, we do. Hundreds of them every day. You do? Huh? How much would you charge me for a diamond bracelet? A little one. I mean. Various prices. It's according to quality, up to a dollar. <laughs> well, that's very reasonable, Mr. Solomon. How can you have the nerve to charge thousands of dollars? <laughs> For a diamond when Margot here sells them for a buck. Well, she sells you pure crystal glass. Do you have any stones that would look good on me? Oh, yes. I have a very nice stone that will look good on you. <laughs> no, I wasn't referring to a tombstone. I think I'll stick to Opal. She's more in my line. Well, I learned a lot tonight uh, from you two about dime store diamonds. Now you're going to try for a chance at the $1,500 question. You beat our other two couples and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The housewife and the gardener are ahead with $170. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected nicknames of cities as your category. Is that right? Your $20. How much are you going to try and talk right out loud into the microphone? Ten. What city is called the biggest little city in the world? The oh. biggest little city in the world. Uh, uh. Take a guess. Uh, uh. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Reno. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the time will you try? I'll try five. Five? What city is called the Mile High City? Yeah. Uh, no, the Mile High City is the uh, Big Bear Lake. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You, you you had the right altitude, but the wrong town. <laughs> it's Denver. They have five dollars, Groucho. How much are you going to bet? Three. Three. <laughs> what city is called the city of brotherly love? <laughs> well, now you're down to two dollars. It was Philadelphia. Oh, might as well. It was Philadelphia. Should have known that from cream cheese. Now you're down to two dollars. <laughs> Okay, here's your last chance to beat the other couple. Yeah. <laughs> if you can beat the other couples with two dollars, Mr. Solomon, yeah. you're a pretty shrewd cookie. <laughs> you know, how much you going to bet? All of it. All of it. <laughs> now, let's not go mad here. <laughs> how about a dollar ninety, Mark? <laughs> Make it the whole two dollars. The whole two dollars? Which, uh, what city is called the Windy City? Chicago. Chicago! <laughs> and they wind up with four dollars. Well, now, wait a minute. I don't want you to crawl away from here with only four dollars. I'm going to give you one more question. You get it right, and you're going to win ten dollars. Remember, no coaching, please. Are you ready? 
Okay, now, put your thinking cap on. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant, Margot Gunner. Plus, they won $4, and that means the housewife and the gardener get the chance to the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. You get the best equipment and the best workmanship whenever you take your car for service to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. You get the benefit of factory designed and approved tools and equipment. In addition, skilled mechanics who know how to use this equipment are sure you of getting a better job done on your car in shorter time. This, of course, means money in your pocket. This also means a car that will serve you faithfully and economically mile after mile. So next time your car needs service, Remember to stop in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Learn what so many car owners all over this country already know, that it pays to stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the housewife of the gardener, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, you ready, Sarah? <clears throat> yeah. Get your gun ready? Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help in the audience. The Earl of Beaconsfield was Prime Minister of England in the 60s, and under his statesmanship, Britain grew to her greatest glory. What was the name of the Earl of Beaconsfield? <laughs> the answer you two have decided upon? Tessler? No, no, it was, it was Disraeli. Oh. Benjamin Disraeli. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Benjamin Disraeli, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $170 in cash, plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. <laughs> You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $2,000. Folks, be sure to see the article about Groucho and You Bet Your Life in the current issue of Look Magazine. Well, Crosby's waiting in the wings, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Good drivers don't brag about their ability to get out of tight spots. They stay out of them. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.